Hi, I'm David Harris, CEO of American Jewish Committee, and I'm standing in a presidential library right now. Let's see if you can guess which presidential library. Here's one quote from that president, and here is a second quote from that president. Yes, indeed, this is the Harry Truman Presidential Library in Independence, Missouri. It's my second visit here, and I'll come back again and again um, if I can. Harry Truman is one of my favorite presidents of all time. And there are several reasons why, and I want to share them. First of all, it is one of the most improbable stories in American history. Harry Truman never graduated from college. Harry Truman was a farmer. He was a failed small businessman. And yet, he became the President of the United States on April the 12th, 1945, having served as Vice President under Franklin Roosevelt for exactly 82 days and having met him exactly twice. Before that, he had been a senator for nearly 10 years and before that, a local official here in Missouri. So the story itself is quite remarkable. From the Midwest, from a small town with Midwest small town values, uh, he rose to become the president of the most powerful nation on earth. Secondly, Harry Truman did not have one minute's honeymoon as president. The United States was in the middle of the Second World War. The war had to be brought to an end first in Europe a few weeks later, and then in Japan a few months later. But Harry Truman's challenges did not end with the end of the war. To the contrary, in the ensuing nearly eight years, as president, Harry Truman presided over what we today call the liberal democratic order, the rules-based order. He also became a fierce opponent of communism. During Harry Truman's period, we had extraordinary moments. We had the United Nations creation. We had the creation of NATO. We had the Berlin airlift. We had the Truman Doctrine that helped save Greece and Turkey from the communists. We had the Marshall Plan, and we had so much more. And for me, as a Jew, one of the proudest moments of the Truman administration has to be Truman's recognition of the State of Israel. 11 minutes after the Jewish state was reborn on May the 14th, 1948, Harry Truman extended U.S. recognition. This was the first country to do so. And it wasn't an easy decision because many in Truman's own administration fiercely opposed American recognition. And that opposition was led by none other than George Marshall, the Secretary of State. And for Truman, perhaps the most admired American um, of his era. But Truman made the right decision. Truman recognized the State of Israel. And all of us who care about the State of Israel should be permanently indebted to this man who resisted those who opposed him so strongly within his own administration and decided, yes, the buck stops here with me and we will extend recognition. And thirdly, for me, Truman is not just a historic figure. His years as president suggest a kind of enduring set of qualities which are as applicable today to Washington, to the presidency, as, as at any time. Truman understood, as he often said, that he may not have been the most qualified person to be president, but his job was to make decisions. He surrounded himself with incredibly smart and talented people. He wasn't afraid of them, though they were all much more educated than he was. But he made decisions, and in retrospect, most of those decisions were absolutely the right decision, including, by the way, Executive Order 9981, which desegregated the American Armed Forces, which has so shamefully been segregated even in the trenches of World War II. And finally, Harry Truman was a man with basic, core, human, admirable values. He unabashedly loved his wife and his daughter. He was close to his mother until her last day. When he finished his presidency in Washington, he didn't create a new career around celebrity and glamour and glitz. He came back to independence. He went back into the same family home. He was a man of modesty who admired 
the ancient Roman figure Cincinnatus. When his time was up, he went back and lived his life quietly. That kind of model of a political figure, whether a Democrat or Republican, is exactly the kind of figure we need in American politics today and always. So here's my salute to a great American president, Harry Truman.